Hello. Well, Hi. Okay. Well, I'm Sandra Kim. I'm the Media Relations Director for Homeschool Legal Defense Association. Joining me today is Kelly Edwards, homeschool coach with 90 Minute School Day and homeschool mom to three of her own kids. Thanks for joining me today, Kelly. It was a Thanks pleasure to meet me. you. <laughs> it was a pleasure to meet you recently in West Virginia, and I'm so excited to get to talk to you today about homeschooling can give time back together to families. I know that your tips will help and inspire us. I see our Facebook friends are joining us now. Hello and welcome to everyone. Please do let us know where you're from and where you're uh, where you are in your homeschooling journey in the comments, whether you're just thinking about homeschooling or just need an add a girl, mom, dad, grandma, caretaker, you got this. I tell that to myself. Kelly, I'm sure, tells that to herself. And we're here today to encourage you. So you've got this. And um, my family just actually started homeschooling just two years ago. I have a 14-year-old, a 10-year-old, and an eight-year-old. Um, and it's been a journey for sure. And I'm so excited to talk to you about our family's experience, experiences. And Kelly, as we get started, will you tell me a little bit more about yourself? What brought you to homeschooling? Um, well, thank you, Sandra, for having me. And um, we started homeschooling um, eight years ago, which it's gone a lot faster lately than it did at the beginning. So we started homeschooling. I never thought I would be a homeschool mom. I'm kind of like that accidental homeschooler that I think resonates with a lot of people. Um, my oldest daughter was in first grade. And what kind of is interesting about my family is our children have all come to us through the foster adoption program. We live here in West Virginia. And so at the time, my daughter was in kindergarten and first school, uh, first grade living with us. She was our foster child. And we knew we were going to adoption with her. Uh, and that's when we started to look for alternatives for, um, for her specifically, just because she wasn't being served in the public school system. She had a lot of uh, emotional, social emotional situations. Academically, she was fine. And so I started digging into homeschooling and um, she's also neurodivergent. And that's something that maybe not a lot of people understand is like neurodivergence is learning differently. And so like ADHD, autism, we're more familiar with that. But trauma is also a neurodivergence, PTSD, anxiety. And um, so she needed a little extra support. And so we brought her home for those reasons. And um, which is kind of funny because we brought her home to do something different than school. And then I kind of recreated school at home for my daughter. So um, we've come a long way since then. But that's kind of originally where we brought her home for attachment number one. And because we could fulfill um, some of her neurodivergent needs better uh, in our home environment. Wow, that is um, really really just heartwarming and just really near and dear to my heart because my uh, sister just um, started on her foster uh, care journey and she has uh, a little one with her right now. So warms my heart. And I just um, am so excited to be talking to you about uh, all the different uh, tips and things that we can talk about. Um, I also wanted to remind our Facebook friends, feel free to drop any questions you have for us about homeschooling can give time back together to your family in the comments. We will have hopefully some time at the end to answer some of those questions. So um, you have talked about the importance of the gift of time. Could you share a little bit more about that? Yes. So I'm super passionate about like advocating for homeschoolers, homeschool moms, homeschool kids, uh, people who are thinking about homeschooling, people mm -hmm. who are just curious. And the reason is, is we can give ourselves the gift of time. Uh, my business is called the 90 minute school day because my kids and I learn every day, all day long. So do your kids, so do kids in the public school system. And so it's really about um, cooperating with one another, learning to collaborate, learning to kind of follow interests to get curious and to do that in the spirit of connection. Um, and so when you have connection and relationship at the bottom of your homeschool, like that's your foundation, then mm -hmm. the sky is sort of the limit. And that's what homeschooling provides, whereas um, there is connection and relationship in a public school setting or a private school setting, but it's like one adult and 30 kids. So that's a little bit of a different dynamic. Um, and giving time is what we never can really give ourselves is the gift of time. Um, it's limited. We're only here so long. We only have our children so long. That old saying about like the years are short, but the days are long. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I totally Especially in, like the little years when, you know, you, you've got all the diapers, you've got the nursing, you've got the um, 
tantrums, all those things. So homeschooling is, is giving yourselves this space because one of the most difficult things is transition times with kids and with adults. Like I don't, I have trouble with transitions myself. Um, so there's so many, there's so many things you can do um, when you're at home with your children because you have the agency um, and you have the decision-making power and you're not subject to some outside institution. Um. Yes. I mean, I think sometimes uh, the choices that you have can be paralyzing, at least for me, because I'm like, oh, wow, I have a chance I can do biology, I can do anatomy, I can do flying creatures. And then I'm like, <laughs> there are so many choices, you know, but, um, <laughs> I, you know, <laughs> too many, but um, which is so nice. Um, but I, I guess one, you know, one thing I could say for sure is that, you know, if our day gets away and, you know, we're watching, there was a little butterfly that landed in our, in our back deck and mm -hmm. um, it was like, just not ready to go anywhere. And so we're like, you had the gift of time. You could sit there. <laughs> we did. And so we sat there and then we made some like simple syrup and then we watched like the, the little, I don't know what it's called. The little thing unfurled. The proboscis. Like, yes. Like, yes. Huh? yes, and they go. I know like, this because I got it in homeschooling. <laughs> no, oh, good job, good job. I have not gotten to that. It was not in our unit. We just went out on the back deck and we went off, you know. But I mean, that's one of the things when you say you have agency. That was our afternoon. We observed the monarch butterfly eating and you know, did a little sketch and it turned into like a whole. Like moment in time, but you're not allowed to have that level of flexibility. So for me, I would say one of the gifts for our family is that flexibility. Yes, yes, flexibility and that freedom um, to go down the rabbit holes. And like the reason you don't know about the proboscis is because no one asked, right? But as soon as someone would have said, what is that called? You would have been learning <laughs> together. And that's, that's the beauty of it is like you, because you're there with your children and you can say, you know what, that history lesson I was planning on today, um, we're going to push pause on that. We can pick that up later and we're going to take this natural science moment and develop those core memories that we can have as, you know, that's what your children are going to remember. They're not going to remember whatever was going on in history that day. They're going to remember this because there's a relationship. Right. And, you know, it is it is those core memories. Um, sometimes I um, get a little bit of uh, a bit of anxiety because I'm like, we didn't check the box. But I have to remember yeah. that this is a journey and mm -hmm. you don't go on a journey thinking I need to check this box and check that box. It You know, it evolves over time. So. Yeah. And, and that's part of kind of like the homeschooler um, developmental stages as the parents. Right. We kind of start and we're excited, but we just don't know where to turn. And, and there's so much information because the internet is amazing for right. information, but then there's that overwhelm that really um, having a relationship with other homeschoolers, being able to tap into all the resources HSLDA provides, um, those really kind of help us, help guide us. And so we need that community as well of fellow homeschoolers, those who have gone before us that can be like, yeah, you don't, you don't need that, you don't need that one. You know, like this is something you need to dig into. Um, Right. Yeah. So you, you can let all the shaft fall away and just go straight to the yeah. grain, which is. Yeah. And, it, and it's and it's reminding yourself of why am I why am I doing this? Why have I made this like uh, countercultural decision? And everybody has a different reason. But it's like that reason that brought you to homeschooling. You can circle back to and write it down. You know, it's like, why am I doing this? I am doing this for me. It was for attachment. Number one, I have like about a hundred reasons probably, but that's the number one. And so whenever I'm having a hard day, I circle back to like, wait, why am I doing this? I'm doing this to develop a relationship with my daughter to make sure that we have that really concentrated time together, that we are building a strong foundation of relationship first. And then I'm going to trust that all that other stuff is going to siphon in after that. So if I'm fighting with her over, cause I've done this, I've done this all the wrong way. Like if I'm fighting with her over like this writing assignment needs to get done by dinner time. Um, well, I we've broken relationship. <laughs> you, yeah, you can't, you actually can't learn when you're kind of like dis, when you've descended out of your like prefrontal cortex and you've descended down into your emotional brain or maybe even your amygdala, learning stops. So you can punch out facts just because you're like, I have to do this or I can't cross go into the next section, um, okay. but you're not learning. And so you have to have that kind of that relaxed state, but I'm kind of getting off topic. So I apologize, but. Okay. No, no, no. That's, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> that's I'll do really that. Dovetails perfectly with homeschooling. So, I mean, um, 
I came out of public school. Can you tell us a little bit what life used to look like in the hustle and bustle of school? Or did you go ahead and start right into homeschooling? So maybe I can talk about, you know, how our lives have gone from from public school and that time schedule to what it looks like now. Yes. And that's a great question because I think most adults, especially us who are looking to homeschool, even if we were homeschooled ourselves, it looks different now. Homeschooling looks much different than it did kind of in the pioneering homeschool eras of like the 90s and early 2000s. But like for me, myself, I was public school educated, private school educated. Um, my daughter went through kindergarten and first grade, and then she actually went back to fifth grade, my oldest. And then my younger two um, have been homeschooled. But my middle daughter, who's eight now, she did go to a Montessori school for preschool. So we have kind of like an eclectic mix where I've been the parent and then I have my background. And what happens when you're in like, a, uh, whether you're going to private school or public school or you're going away to school, you've got that time constraint of start time. And so you wake up in the morning and you're all running around. We got to where's, where's the so-and-so's shoes? And I put your backpack over there. Would you move it? And, and we're getting ourselves our lunches, our clothes. We're getting out the door. We're trying to catch the bus maybe, or we're driving to school. So we're not late. Then they're in school all day. And then we're in the, we're in the line to pick them up. We're at the bus stop. We bring them home. They may or may not have homework. We get the snack. We do the extracurricular activity. We drop them off there. We pick them up or we go. We eat dinner, maybe together, maybe not, because we've got too much going on. And then maybe there's free time in the day, maybe not. It's bedtime, rinse and repeat, and we're recovering on the weekends. And so that was my experience um, when we were doing kindergarten and first grade. I still She still needed to nap. She has a high sleep need. Um, and so that was part of, like, besides attachment, like, get us out of this rat race. We, we, we can't have this connection that we're looking for because we just don't have the time because we've subscribed to these different systems. Uh, agreed. Agreed. And, you know, it's not the system that you have made. So, I mean, my right. kids um, aren't super late risers. They are natural clock wakes them up around the 7 a.m. But that did not work with, you know, the public school schedule. So I would wake them up at 6 a.m. And there was like screaming and yelling from 6 to 7 because I was like very yeah. concentrated on them having something to eat before they got on the bus. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they needed to take that 10 minute walk to the bus stop, which came at 717. Or the and run? So, yeah, the run, the run. And then we would miss it. So then I would have to drive them to the next bus stop or to school. Yes. And so I totally understand and agree that level of, um, it was really, really high stress. You know, cortisol levels are rising, mm -hmm. they're screaming. And I mean, to, to show you the opposite of what that looks like now, the kids sort of wake up on their own. I, I do require them to, to get dressed and brush their teeth and make their bed that we do have a morning routine. And then they come downstairs and then um, I do have one kid that does like to cook. So she's like, oh, who wants an omelet? Like who wants, you know, hey. easy. Um, it's just like this very sort of like slower start. And then, you know, we turn on the podcast, science podcast of the day. Let's start with that. It's a much different start, and I don't miss the other one for sure. Yes, yes, same here. It's easier for me, and especially if your child is neurodivergent. Like, if you've got a child with ADHD, autism, you've got a child with dyslexia, you've got a child with trauma or anxiety, then whatever the neurotypical child experiences and parent getting out the door, then it's that much more exacerbated. Or if that's you as the parent, um, you know, it's certainly you're, it's almost like a, a system to fail at, right? And then you failed and you've yelled at your kid and it's not even 9 a.m. And then you've sent them off to school. You know, no one wants to be feeling that way. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I guess now, you know, when we talk about dynamics and how the kids are interacting with each other, you know, at home, how is that? Uh, for us, it's very different just because uh, normally our kids would all be in different schools at this point. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they're all under the same roof and um, we're doing things together. So there's a lot more shared experiences, shared memories. Um, we're reading the same books or we're doing read aloud so that there's their, that shared moment as well. Um, do you have some sort of uh, experiences like that for you with your kids as well? Yes. In fact, um, for us, we ha have a natural rhythm to our days, but right now we have family in town. So we're just like still on summer vacation. Um, but 
what has developed that's been a really sweet result that I don't know that I kind of like thought too much about because the real, our, our number one thing was our, our relationship as a parent with the child. But the really sweet sauce has been um, the development of relationship between my children as siblings. And then also the deepening of friendships that they have with the other um, homeschoolers that we've built community with. So we, at different times of the year, it looks a little different, but we, we systematically meet with homeschoolers out in nature once a week, sometimes twice. And so they've developed these really rich friendships and they are outside of their age range because it's, an, it's just like how society has kind of always operated. You don't have to have like a peer aged person to be friends with. Like, I don't know, you and I could compare notes right now, but we were probably not exactly the same grade, grade level. And, you know, we're friends. And, and so this is normal. And so my eight year old has really good friends that are 12. And she also would say that like some of the adults are her friends and then some of the younger children. So that mixed age connection is something you can offer, which everyone's really concerned about socialization all the time when they start homeschooling. But actually, the amount of socialization socialization you get that's healthy is just kind of, uh, the, your, the sky's the limit for your homeschooling and how you can kind of build that. So I would say sibling relationships are really tight in my family. Um, I'm not sure that they would necessarily have that, that time together to work through. Believe me, we have plenty of like <laughs> situations where we have to work through our social emotional skill set and our toolbox and maybe pick up some new ones. Like we don't speak to each other like that. We don't no. grab before asking, but it's these opportunities, opportunities that we're able to curate and resolve in a way that, that align with our family values and not some adult that I've kind of, um, I've given that authority to just by proxy and enrolling them in the public school system or private. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. So um, I love the fact that I have a little bit more time to speak into our family culture. And, you know, we, we do things. Um, one of the things that I do with my kids is that um, they start a tennis pretty early. So, you know, when we have time in the week or early in the morning, I'll play doubles with them or they'll play yeah. single. Somebody will be the ball girl. And it's something really, really special because I know that um, in a more normal situation or if they were going to uh, school that we would never have time like that, you know, on a Wednesday morning. So um, just treasuring those times. And then, you know, when the kids are going off, I'm like, I need you guys to go ride your bike 30 minutes away. And then I don't care what happens, but just giving them that sort of freedom to like roam and just be, I think mm -hmm. it's um, really a priceless, a priceless treat. And, and it gives them opportunities to develop responsibility, right? Because like I do something very, well, not similar, but, but similar. Um, I walk with a walking partner every day. And so my kids are on the playground and we're walking around the playground, but this is time where they are growing in responsibility because they are the ones at the playground. And um, I've got different ages and they're playing there, um, but they also kind of get to grow in their own autonomy. Like they're responsible because I'm a little bit farther away and they get to kind of grow in that area and have that time together every morning that's consistent. And so, yeah, it's just, there's so many little things like that. And I think people like hearing the stories. So um, I loved hearing yours about how you invited them to play. And then I kind of have this regular walk time and they have this regular, we call it morning movement. Um, and that's helpful. That is awesome. And, you yeah. know, I, I guess, um, you know, I keep find, I keep trying for me as a new homeschooler, keep trying to find the right and perfect way. And what I've finally <laughs> realized, <laughs> I'm a little slow, slow on the uptick, but what I finally realized is that there is no right way. There is mm -hmm. your way, there is your family culture way, and there is a way that you feel comfortable with, and it may or may not be at the same time or pace as others. Yes. And so the whole like, not, you know, putting my kids against your kids, like, oh no, they already right. finished that, or they know what a proboscis is and we don't, you know, it's like, it's, you know, there's, there's so many different things and just, um, going about homeschooling at your own pace is really where I have been able to find rest, peace, joy, you know, and, and let go of the fact that we are all moving at our own pace and that is okay. So I guess that's yeah, one thing I would say <laughs> is a big one. Yeah. It's all about trusting ourselves and that, that we are comprised of our family unit for a reason and that these kids can um, explore at their own pace. And it's okay if Bobby Jr. down the street is reading at an eighth grade level and he's eight and my nine-year-old is still at a second grade level. It's okay because 
I think you and I probably read at the same level, you know, it, it, it's kind of like comparing potty training notes, you know, sometimes that's more helpful to kind of look at a stage that we've successfully kind of emancipated ourselves from. And it's like, right. Hey, you know what, sometimes you have the early potty trainers and sometimes you have the late ones. And, and it's not really about us so much as like, they're on their own time schedule and we can choose to make it overly complicated um, and, and give a lot of extra effort on our part. And, and that might actually break relationships. And so sometimes it's better to just honor the child, look at what's really kind of kind of step, take a step back and less is always more. That's like my favorite saying ever is less is more. It's like note to self. Oh, that's a good one. I might have to jot that one down. Less is more. And also, you know, knowing like my son's eyes have glazed over, we are no longer interested in carryover anymore, <laughs> you know, and just knowing yeah. we are done, we are done for right now. And so just not having to sit there through the rest of, what the whole class is doing and that we are moving at the pace of my child is again, to me, a huge gift that they can move at that time. Yeah. Um, so I know we've talked about some things that uh, the family does together. Um, I talked about, we do family tennis. Um, mm -hmm. We do family hikes. Um, this one what is one that my husband is not into, but for some reason I really like it when he does it with us, which is, um, family grocery shopping. I don't know why he doesn't like it. I think it's fun. Um, but what are some fun things that your family does together? Okay. We do not family grocery shop. I love that for you. And I'm kind of curious. I'm like, I would like to talk offline about this family grocery shopping and why you enjoy it so much. Um, like yes. Yeah. I, well, and, you know, um, and I, and I do think it's really fun to hear how different families and, and what they're doing. So like for us, um, one of, uh, one of the things that I enjoyed hiking myself and, um, I don't know that my husband didn't like it. I just don't think he did a lot of it. And so we enjoy, um, hiking out in nature and he's very into the stars. So he really likes looking at stars that night. Um, yeah. and our oldest has gotten kind of, uh, interested in that with him, but then she, because of homeschooling, she has really kind of grown this huge love of birding and, yeah. Um, by, and one of the nice things about homeschooling that I don't think a lot of people talk about is like, it becomes kind of a family interest, even if it's only one person. So she's the birder. She reads the magazines. She buys the books. She's like reading all the time. But because she's so interested in it, we kind of get informed by proxy. And, and my own knowledge of the local birds that live around us has really grown. And, and because we're home more and we're outside and we hike as a family or we bike ride as a family or we just go to the park or we might just like stop on the side of a road and go down a trail. We've done that before. Um, we'll see these birds and then we've, we've gotten to start recognizing them with her. And then she gets a chance to inform us and teach us about that. So sometimes, you know, I, I mean, I always I'm learning things, but it's about uh, inviting the family to participate and then honor someone's interest. I love that. Well, I have zero interest in um, NBA basketball, but now I know more about it than I've ever wanted to know. <laughs> my son wants to talk about it. He wants to talk about who got drafted to where and what their family story is. And his brother also plays and the father also coaches. And I'm like, can we talk about something else? But it has become a family thing. Cause then we'll quiz him. Hey, do you know, like who got drafted in 1980 and he'll, he'll know the answer. Yeah. Um, so now we play family basketball. He likes to show us his trick moves. Um, I like to show him that I can still actually make three point three point shots. He's pretty pretty impressed by his mom from time to time. And I know who Giannis Anton DeCupo is. And just so you know, Rise is a great movie on Disney like, Plus. Um, I have three like, girls. I'm like <laughs> learning a lot here. <laughs> oh, it's, it's it's a neat story about um, these brothers um, who lived in Greece and then they had an opportunity to play for the NBA. Um, just a really neat story, but um, just showing their their dedication and grit. Um, but anyways, again, I totally agree with you. I just don't think that if we weren't all under one roof for so many hours, I would know all about all these things. But, right. you know, you would know he likes this. You would know some of it, but you wouldn't have had yeah. all of that time to really um, be there to be shared with. You know, right. we get to be shared with, with our children all day long. And, and if you have a, a kids like my, mine, they're like a stream of consciousness. Sometimes I'm tuned in and other times I'm like, what was that? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my ears are tired. Okay. I mean, um, you know, for me, one of the sweet things is, you know, I do work and so I'm working from home and, you know, he'll come by and give me a sweet little kiss and move on his little way. 
Um, unless he has to do his journal, then he avoids me like the plague because he's like, I've got to do something. <laughs> I haven't done it. And so, um, but yeah, definitely. I think I totally agree with you. It's not birding for us. Apparently it's the NBA, um, but hopefully there'll be something that I'm maybe more interested in. Yes. Well, and you know, that's yeah. something else that I think is um, kind of fun to talk about is like homeschooling, we want to follow our children's interests and we want to support them in their interests. But it's also like Charlotte Mason talked about this a lot. Um, that's one kind of philosophy of homeschooling. And she talks a lot about mother culture, which is to continue our own learning. So our children, so we're, we're modeling, but it's also just for us. It's like that self-care practice where we find something that we're interested in. Like I've kind of rediscovered watercoloring as an oh. adult by homeschooling my children. Cause then I, I heard somewhere along the line about nature journaling. And then I just, I just picked it up for myself, but my children join me. They kind of see me watercoloring and sometimes I just want to be by myself. And then it turns into like this beautiful, we're all watercoloring. And then I'm sitting there and I'm like, Oh, this is more of a gift. Like I'm watching them flourish and we're, we're just relaxing together and they want to be with me and I can facilitate that in a way that also fills me up. I don't know if that made sense, but yeah, no, that totally makes sense. So, um, you know, I was like not having the best time. I don't know whether it was sometime last year where I was like, everything just seemed like a chore. Everything was really, really hard. And mm -hmm. a friend of mine was like, why don't you teach what you love and what you're interested in? I'm like, that's not what people are doing in the second and fourth grade, you know? And she was like, <laughs> yes. what are people doing in the second and fourth grade? Whatever you want, Sandra. And I was like, Oh, yeah. And so um, I did a poem a month so they would memorize because the brains are like so. Yes, it's an incredible. Delicious. Yeah. And so I would I would give them a poem and then I would say, OK, so we have a month to learn this poem and then we'll talk about it and all this stuff in process. And um, they would look at the poem and be like, there is no way. This is way too long. And then like in three days, they'd be like, can I recite it for you? Yeah. Isn't so, it incredible? Yeah. And so once they know it, um, then we would discuss it. It's much easier, you know, to, to do that. And so I had a moment this summer, we're at the beach, the girls were, you know, they had played. And so they were just resting in the sand. So their heads were together. And then they went line by line, words worth the daffodils, not because I told wow. them to, but because they were sort of quizzing each other, like, Hey, who remembered that poem from back in May? And I was like, Oh my goodness, it's sticking, you know? Yeah. Yes. But and they're play and they're playing around with it. Like it kind of turns into this riff, you know, children love poetry for that reason is there's, there's th this lyrical quality, there's a rhythm to it, there's rhyme, and then there's so many good adjectives. And so it's just really like developing a love of poetry. Like I personally hated poetry because it was <laughs> always like, now the English lesson today is we're writing haikus. And so just oh, oh. bam out the haiku you know, check the box and, you know, move on. And it wasn't presented in kind of like an interesting way or an applicable way. Cause you really, right. to make learning your own, you have to be able to apply it. And so we want to fill up. That's one thing homeschooling does is because they have so much time to explore their own interests outside of homeschooling that they can, they're building up these reservoirs of knowledge and, and context and, and they're applying what they have learned. Like that's a, such a beautiful example of your daughters just like playing a game with each other based off of this poem and and yeah and it's relational I tell them to do it and I didn't yes tell them. It just, like that. I wasn't like recite daffodils now I was just yeah. under the umbrella you know and then then all of a sudden they were doing it and I was like it worked but you know poetry mm -hmm. was no part of our curriculum per se but it was like you said it's the mother yeah. culture and it was just something that's near and dear to my heart and whether mm -hmm. or not they understand you know this 10th grade level poem because right. they're eight or 10, it doesn't matter. It's, you know, it'll eventually build into each other or not. Yeah. Yeah. And it's important, just like I was talking about my daughter and birding and you were talking about your son in basketball and now they know something about their mom that maybe they wouldn't have ever known. You know, my mom likes poetry. She specifically really enjoys this one and, and I can share that with her. And then that, that also teaches our children the socio-emotional, like socio-emotional intelligence is so huge right now. There's all these curriculums to like help support that in the public school systems. Um, mm -hmm. And it is important, we want that, but it comes naturally when you're surrounded by your family because good, bad or otherwise, your family, you're working at it together. There's that unconditional love and you can, um, learn to care about someone else's interest. I love that. Yes. We, oh, I don't know that the 10 year old appreciates, um, all that about the NBA. Well, she will. 
<laughs> oh, he will. <laughs> um, but my husband got us all tickets, so we got to have that shared experience. We all went to an NBA game, and whether or not we were into it, it was really fun. And so, you know, we got to cheer and just have a really good time. So all those things culminate into memories, which, you know, again, back to the, the gifts these, um, one of the things I think um, I say is that uh, memories happen in your everyday life, as opposed to mm -hmm. like this one week in the Outer Banks, like that's what we made all of our good family memories. I mean, for us, they, they sort of happen, you know, funny things happen, or, you know, we're reading a book and we remember that funny little passage or somebody made a meal and it wasn't that great. You know, it's just a lot. It's down in family lore. Those meatballs. <laughs> we have Swedish meatballs. My poor mother made them for my father right after they got married and like, he won't let her live it down. So we all know right. about like, don't eat her Swedish meatballs. I've never had them offered to me. So it must've been bad. But yeah. It's like, it's all those shared, shared moments, but they happen every single day, not like on some special weekend right. trip but it happens just because, you know, you are under that same roof and there are these funny things that happen. Yes. So, yes, yes, yes. Um, it's, it's in the mundane. That's where the memories are made. It is, it is. Yeah. It's, it's so funny. People always like try to make it happen in a very unnatural way. And mm -hmm. it's, it's never in those, it's never in those moments. It's always on like the, oh, I thought this was a five mile hike, but I think we're at the 10 mile mark. We, <laughs> I did do that and everybody was super unhappy. Yeah. <laughs> Not yeah. on purpose. Right? There's so many great memories where like a lot of people aren't happy and part of that yeah. memory. <laughs> but that's how you build resilience. Like you overcome together, you work together. We were on the river yesterday and a rainstorm came up and it was just like, we we're in the middle of the river and this is just not okay but it was you know we're, we we improvised we we did, went through something together collectively it's going down in family lore and you have more of those opportunities your kids get to see you at your best and at your worst you know when you're losing your temper because you're on the side of the road with a flat tire you know they they they're watching how this is navigated where if they were in school they wouldn't necessarily have those skills they might learn about them in driver's ed but it's like real life happening how do we manage ourselves and keep everyone safe while we're on the side of the road and that did happen to me in the winter at 10 p.m on the side of the road and um we had to wait uh almost three hours for a tow truck so we ended up watching um terrible youtube videos <laughs> yes we do have that memory <laughs> thank you <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this is a real bad time suck, but guess what? We're passing time. You pass time um, and you guys are laughing about it later. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you need more time to pass yeah. before you Too really soon. laugh about it. Yes, yes, yes. Um, you know, so we've talked about some of the surprises that have been at home. Um, have, have you seen some surprises, you know, good or bad for me? Um, I didn't know all those life skills would be accomplished fairly quickly. So uh, two of my kids know how to run, unload, do the washing machine, take the lint out, fold and put away their clothes. Um, yes. That's not something that I had any expectation of my children doing before like 17. I don't know why. I just just thought like they're not even at home. So to, to make that a, a thing that they did was really not a part of uh, something I was thinking about pre-homeschooling. Now I'm like, hi, you're home. Like you're let's let's do this. And so, I mean, for me, life skills have been a huge one. So can you talk about some of that sort of? Oh, surprises? yeah. 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 The surprises of homeschool, like that's such a good illustration of just like part of building a family culture is doing life together. And 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 I do hear this and I understand the logic and, and, and what works for one family is different for another family. So if you have your children in the public school system, I can understand why you're doing the laundry because their schedules are so jam packed, especially if they have extracurricular activities. But when you're at home, you're able to delegate and teach. So like, I'm like, hey, we're a part of a team. We all live here. We all make the mess. And so and and our household, everybody has something to do with the laundry. So it's mainly my oldest daughter's responsibility. But the, I've, tr I've told her, I'm like, you want to help me help them learn because that will work yourself out of a job. Um, and then the eight year old's gonna, she's coming up on it. She's almost there because she likes learning together. She likes doing it with her sister and she really likes stain treatment, which makes us all happy. Um, so they do the laundry, they cook their own meals. Um, they're, they're at a place where every once in a while they'll cook a meal for the family. And so mm -hmm. this is helping, this is helping work me out of my household jobs because I can outsource and I can delegate and I'm, I'm um, giving them the responsibility that's growing their muscles. And so 
absolutely practical life skills. Another surprise of homeschooling for me is um, just the opportunities for mentorship. And so because I'm in charge of my time and, and my children's um, time, and I want them to be in charge of their time, we have a wonderful mentorship for my 14 year old. So she's, this is her second year and she's working. One of her interests is also in gardening and regenerative agriculture. And so we have a family friend that owns um, a veggie wagon and they grow their own vegetables. And they outsource what they can't fill in. And so my daughter goes out there two days a week and um, is mentoring and interning with this farm and picking up all kinds of skills. People that I just meet for the first time, they're like, oh, you're my daughter's name. You know, I didn't, you know, it's nice to meet you. And I'm like, how do you know her? You know, I just met you. And they're like, oh, well, we met her out at the wagon. And so oh. there's these extra opportunities that, that you can make happen that help in your child's education in maybe a um, alternative way, but how rich is that type of learning? Agreed, I totally agree. Um, one thing that we're incorporating into our homeschool more deliberately, I mean, we did it sort of intermittently, but is um, service. So, you know, I'm like, hey, how can we serve our community that we live in? Because um, you guys are here and there's time to do it. And so we've been exploring some of those opportunities. And um, one of the things that we're gonna do is we're gonna have a, quarterly um, talent show kind of thing, whoever other homeschoolers want to come. Um, we live near some senior communities and they were like, yes, come in, perform. We don't care what it is. And so we're super looking forward to connecting um, that way. And then um, I taught my kids how to play all the silly card games that I did, you know, growing <laughs> up. And so they love it. And like, they just, they're like, oh, I don't want to play mommy. They're like, mommy, you have to play with your non-dominant hand and the other hand behind, <laughs> you know, like we're handicapping you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And like, um, it's, it's so fun, I guess, um, you know, just having, I appreciate it more. I feel like just because I know what it's like on the other side where, you know, I didn't have them do any chores because they really weren't home. They weren't home right. from 7, 17 until three. And then at three, it was just like you said, they would have a snack homework, after school activity, wash, go to bed. So I don't know where in there they're going to do any chores, but there was no time. Yeah. Yeah. And that can happen also to us in, in our homeschools. Like we can, because I think sometimes we think, well, we're home all day. Yes, I can do this. Yes, I can do this. Yes, I can do this. And the next thing we know, we're running ourselves and our family ragged. So that's something to keep in mind too. Like you want to say no to good things so that you can say yes to the best. And that takes that intentionality that we talked about earlier about like, why am I doing this? Um, what is my main goal here? And all of these wonderful opportunities keep presenting themselves. And I have all of these extra, it's not just for me. It's not just for my 14 year old. I have an eight year old. I have a three year old. We were a foster family. So, you know, if we have a foster child, we might have someone else to consider. And so it's always about that time management aspect. And and we all do it. Like, you know, here I am, I'm like a time management person. And then I'll get myself into being overscheduled, but it's knowing how to pull back out to recognize the signs. How do I like unschedule myself? How do I kind of like work this smarter next time? That's also kind of things that we pick up as we homeschool. So if that's you, like, you know, you can get yourself out of it. it, it you know, we can answer those questions maybe. <laughs> Yes. Um, so I worked myself into that corner of the <laughs> yes to all the good things. So at the end of the year, um, I was really cranky. My husband was really cranky and my daughter is really cranky. And I, I looked back and I said, why are we so cranky? It was because she was in Girl Scouts. She was in ballet. She was in piano. She was in violin. She was in tennis and yes. she was in, I mean, gymnastics. That was one kid. I'm yeah. not even going through the other activities of the other ones. So when I would say to my husband, like, oh, hey, I want to have a museum day. He's like, no, I just already drove all over everywhere. We're not going to do, you know, the best thing. And so this year I'm like really, really good. And I'm like, we like ballet and we like our ballet friends, but we are not doing that. Not because ballet is not good because ballet is great because we are going to be really, really good about, you know, how we're using that time, our family time, because like you said, it doesn't matter whether you're a homeschooler or other schooler, you know, your time is your time. And if you decide to give all these pieces away, then all of a sudden you're, you know, running around and you're, you're, yeah. you're, you're no longer having fun. Yeah. And then you're like, you're all going back to school. I, you know, and, and so, you know, sometimes we, we all get ourselves there. <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh, I have totally been there. I'm like, that yellow bus is looking really good. Um, yeah. And so like, let's normalize that. You and I are totally normalizing it. That that happens to all of us. We have the best intentions in the world. And then we, it, 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 we get in seasons of overwhelm. And so it's about learning from those seasons and getting to the root of what, what happened so we can understand it. And then we can um, do better in the future. And so it's about like, not just like having the time, like we have all this time, we're homeschoolers. No, it's about making the time and being really strategic with it um, so that we're having that extra time that is so fruitful and, and available to us to build those relationships with our family members rather than everybody living their best life independently and like we're all like doing this. <laughs> yes, yes. And I mean, um, I, I totally learned that the hard way and um, I'm not <laughs> doing that again or at least I said I wasn't and somebody just had asked me like oh hey do you want to be in like you know, you know, nope we already signed up to do one field trip a month and that is what we're gonna do I'm sure your field trips will be great and maybe next year um, yeah and, and that's important to teach our to our kids because they're usually with us when we're like no and then why not why can't I do this and it's like well this is why and, and because my children have lived through those seasons where we were over scheduled, they can accept like, oh, yes, I remember that. Okay, makes sense. And so that's learning too. Agreed. Um, I have a few questions here. Okay, great. Um, let me see. Okay, do you have any good resources for kids who should be receiving therapies, but due to finances, private therapy is not an option and it's not available through the public school system. Sorry okay, sorry. okay. No, no, no. I love these questions because this is, this is where the meat is. So as I understand it and um, whoever asked this question, they can clarify. It sounds to me like you need services for your children. They've probably got some kind of diagnosis um, or, or some kind of label that uh, in the public school system, you would work an IEP or a 504. For, and so now it's like, okay, well, I'm homeschooling, but now I'm the services. And um, I, I don't know where you live, um, but you are still eligible for those services. So if you're looking for those, like, let's say it's speech therapy, um, they're still able to do that. So you would still work with your local school board at trying to get those services. Um, those are available. And then it's just kind of, you have to advocate for your child because they, the school system itself isn't not wanting to give you those services. They're just not as familiar as they are with working within like the school administration. Um, the other thing would be is to do, do some homework because there's a lot of resources out there about how we can come um, and support neurodivergence. Like neurodivergence isn't some sort of like less than, it is a difference. And so you have a different learner and a lot of times just bringing that different learner home into their home environment, that resolves a lot of the um, complications that show up when you send your neurodivergent child to school. Like somehow they, you didn't even know they were neurodivergent a lot of times until they enter the school system. And then they're, you're, you're in the parent teacher conference and they're telling you your kid has ADHD or they think you need to pursue an autism diagnosis. And you're like, well, what? Um, so, so we kind of think about that. And a lot of that is, is because when you're a neurodivergent child, you've got trouble with transitions. You've got, there's a lot going on. Um, but by bringing them back in the, the home environment, you're able to provide an, a level of support that the best specialists in the world, the hour or so that they've got to meet with them or longer, depending on what it is, because I know that different levels of service are available. But you're able to provide that as the parent. I'm not sure if that's helpful, but like you can reach out to me on a private DM if you want like actual specifics. I can send you websites, podcasts to listen to, books to listen to. We can list a few of them. I don't know how you want to take this, um, but that would be how I would kind of hit that right off the top. Thank you so much. Um, okay. and I think uh, we also, with our director of um, research, uh, he did a huge project on exactly what you said, which was once you bring that kid home, um, it kind of makes all the, a lot of those things um, go away because a lot of things that were, they were dealing with happen at their own pace, be that transitions or learning at their own pace or not having to, you know, deal with, um, you know, the stigma of not having learned that next step and then, you know, always having the special ed person coming in and they're kind of, you know, pegged as the one that is not smart, you know, everybody knows that special ed person, you know, all those things. And so what happens is whether or not the parents have specialized, um, 
you know, they don't have any training or anything in those. In, it doesn't matter. It's their kid and their kid is home with their You are kids. the specialist. Yeah, you understand your child in a way that no one else ever will. Yeah. Right, right. And I mean, for, for me, a long time, you know, that's, it's like this thing where I'm like, well, you know, I've gone to school and I've gone to grad school, but I'm not a trained teacher. And, you know, my husband's like, well, I'm not a trained teacher, but like, I failed to take that one more step. And it's like, uh, no, we actually are. We taught them how to do a whole bunch of things before we sent them to school. And it's like, we are their first teachers. And frankly, I think because we love them so much, like we would want what's best for them. So if we're not it, then we're going to try to find what that is. And I think that that's like step number two, because that's what my friends who don't homeschool say. They're like, I'm not a teacher. I wasn't trained in that. I can't do that. But it's yeah. like, you're your child's parent. So that means mm -hmm. that you can. Yeah. And, and actually so many teachers that are like trained educators that decide to homeschool, there's a lot of them out there. They're, they go through a process and, and I had to go through this process too. It's de-schooling. Like you have oh. to kind of unwind this um, idea of like, one teacher and 30 children when you're in home it's not a top down it's like like we've already talked about it's this communal learning i'm learning with you i just have more resources and i have more experience to support this learning um and we're doing it together and we're learning together like i've learned so much more as a homeschool mom than i learned the first time around um <laughs> through, like, <cases> <laughs> yes i mean if i wasn't humble before i'm certainly humbled now because yeah. like, today like you know, my son's like, do you know how a shell grows? Well, no, I don't. I have no idea. I went to a lot together. They didn't teach me that one, <laughs> you yeah. know, for sure. Okay. Yeah, and education is just learning how to learn. We want our kids to learn how to learn. They don't need to be full of facts. They just need to know how to get the information and to think critically. That's what we really exactly. want. Exactly. And, you know, I think um, that de-schooling part is a really important one to mention because, you know, I'll tell my daughter and she's always like, I don't like homeschool. I don't like homeschool. And I'm like, I need you to tell me what it is that you don't like about homeschool. And, you know, she wants this like, you know, at six o'clock we do this and at seven o'clock we do that. And there's a break. And you know what I mean? She has this sort of like institutionalized mentality. And I was like, if you want to write a book about, you know, the gummy bear trip. She started this really, really crazy book. And I was like, did you read that somewhere? Cause it's really sort of way out there. And she's like, no, it's just my idea. And I was like, well then write your book and we can publish your book. And she's like, yeah. you know what I mean? It just blows her mind. Cause she's like, yeah. I'm like, and you can decide every day I can work an hour on this book and then I will have it really published bound. You can sell it, you know, book signing. Yeah. And I think for her, it's like such a leap because mm -hmm. it's always been this certain way and you have to do it a certain yeah. way. And, yeah. you know, homeschooling is, there is no, there is no certain. No, yeah. And that's, that's really preparation for life right there. It's beautiful. It is. It is. And, you know, I, I have um, taken a couple days off last year where I'm like, you know what, guess what? We don't have school today. And the kids like, they kind of freeze. Cause they're like, I don't understand. Like, why are we off? Is today off day? And I'm like, no, I have deemed it to be off for us. And yeah. now we're going to go get ice cream. And they're like, but why? You know what I mean? It's Why just, not? <laughs> yeah. 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 Car before I change my mind. Yeah. Um, okay. We have another question. We feel bad because we don't have many friends and the co-ops are all church-based. How do we make it easier? Kids are six and seven. Okay. So this is, I get this question all the time. So mm -hmm. um, it, it sounds like, uh, so she's got six and seven. Is that correct? That's the age yes. of her children. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So Obviously, like faith-based communities are are stemming from their church. Um, I attend church, but my homeschool group has nothing to do with church. And so um, this was a friend of mine who um, is not a faith-based homeschooler. She's a secular homeschooler. And she was really looking for the type of community I was also looking for, which is I want play-based. I want nature. I want community with other homeschooling moms. And I want it to be diverse. I want to have lots of opinions because we don't have freedom unless we have dissent. So if we're all an echo chamber of things, then are we really learning or are we just amen, girl? You know, so I didn't want that. She didn't want that. And so we each kind of, there's lots of ways you can do this. I'll just list a couple. You need to build your own. You need, if you want it, you might need to build it. Um, so what you can do is you can just have one other person and then the two of you meet and you guys invite anyone else, you know, and then you kind of invite from there. You can go um, put up a, put up an ad and let your librarians in your, in your um, local area know you're interested in meeting with other homeschoolers, especially if you're a new homeschooler, the librarians know the homeschoolers um, use Facebook, start a Facebook <laughs> so group. True. It's so true. It's so true. 
<laughs> I know all my librarians by name. We're like friends. And they're like, have you read? And I'm like, no. And then she's like, I think you might, because you're doing Roman history. She's like, have you heard about this series? I was like, no, this is amazing. This is exactly what I didn't know I needed. Um, so, you know, go to your libraries. Um, think about where homeschoolers hang out. Go to Facebook. Look up a Facebook group. Um, Wild and Free is an excellent organization. They have lots of um, in-person communities that meet and just go out in nature together. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of ways to build community. And if you're homeschooling, you need that community because there's so many naysayers and they hit you with the same questions over and over again. You're constantly defending yourself. But you need that in-person community, those strong relationships of like-minded and like-minded in the sense of homeschooling, but they might be, you might have some unschoolers in your group. You might have people who are really like classical homeschoolers and those are kind of diametrically opposed and you all coexist because you're all doing this um, countercultural thing together. So community is definitely a huge thing and that's how I kind of attack it. Um, I agree with you a hundred percent. And I can also say at HSLDA, we have a director of groups. His name is Darren Jones. And if you go on our website, um, I will try to list it here in the comments. If you go to groups, you can get yourself plugged in that way. Um, as a new homeschooler, I was trying to find, you know, that perfect group and I wasn't able to find it. Like one was too far away, one met on the wrong day. And so, you know, just like Kelly said, I made my own group. I found a friend. We were both pandemic schoolers. <laughs> like we both had similarly aged children, not exactly perfect, which, you know, is really hard for people who are not, you know, coming from, like we want everyone to match up exactly year to year. And That's a school I mentality. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really getting over that because somebody said to me, how natural is it that you have 30 kids exactly the same age in one room at all times? And I'm like, oh, that is really weird. You know, yeah. but like unless you take it out of the context that people think that is normal, it's not normal. Yeah, <laughs> it's not normal. And, and kids and we gravitate, we build friendships after we leave school. We build friendships based on interests or geography. Like I'm friends with my neighbors. I'm friends mm -hmm. with people I share interests with. Um, and one of the things you'll notice if you start a play-based community group is like, there's always the builders and the builders are like 14, 13. Like my eight-year-old is a builder. So if there's water, she's damming it every single time. And the other builders get together and they teach each other what they know and they work on their own little science experiments. And then you have the climbers and the climbers are all one-upping each other over here. And then you've got the like organized game people that are like, let's play. And so they, they and, the, and it's, it's a variety of ages and that's the richness that homeschooling gives and then there's the mentorship there's the natural mentorship that's wrapped up in just play so there's a lot there agree and i mean it really is so important to to get outside you know good day bad day hot day cold day um yeah. i know that i feel better when i go outside and you know when things are going awry i'm like just go outside and i'm not sure whatever you guys want to do take a dog don't take a dog go for a walk see how you feel when you get back Yes. I was just wanted to say one more thing about the community. Um, I host rooms on Clubhouse. It's a free app every week. Um, and that's if you can't find or you need like something now until you can build your in-person community. Um, it's just a longer form. It's like this, but it's audio only. And homeschoolers come up with questions and it's a large group participating. So look, go to, go to my, um, I guess my credentials will be in the comments for this, but like I'll plug you into there because that would just be something on a weekly basis. You can tune in and ask your questions to a group of homeschoolers. It's also another alternative to the ones we've already given. That's really good. That is awesome. But I'm sure you'll echo this with me. Do not be an island because you'll be very sad. Don't be an island. Homeschool is not meant to be alone. Not supposed to be no. lonely. You know, don't be lonely. You know, find your people. Find your person that you can walk with. Find a mentor. Um, Every time I feel like I'm doing something wrong, I call this woman whose kids went to college and they all don't live in her house now and they've all moved on in life. And so I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing with this. She's like, yeah, you know, I wasn't really into that. So I just have them read a couple books and they'll be fine. So, you know, yeah. like you need a they'll be fine person. And then maybe you find like an identified cheerleader where you're down in the dumps and you can call that person. They can be like, hey, you got this. You know, you need all these different people. That person could be one person, that person could be multiple people, that could be a community group. Like I have, a, um, I'm not able to get to it all the time, but they meet once a month. So it's like homeschooling moms. And so you get to go together, you get to commiserate, you get to have share resources. And um, really that's sort of the, the gas that keeps the homeschooling, you know, go. Because you can't, you know, what is that thing? Uh, 
you can't pour out of an empty vessel, right? And so I think, you know, I did like the empty vessel a couple of months where I was like, I am unhappy, you know, which is not. No, I was there. I was there with you. I was like, help me. I don't even know who I am anymore. (laughs) Yes, yes. And so I find, you know, I'm happy. The kids are happy. We're all, you know, happy is the wrong word, but we're all content and we're living in a nice, nice environment that we want to be in together. And so, you know, if you, it really stems from whoever is administering, say, most of the uh, homeschooling. And for my husband and I, he's like, I feel like all we do is do homeschooling and talk about homeschooling. He's like, I don't want to do that anymore. So it took me to be like, okay, we're on a date. I'm not going to talk about what, which math we're going to do. Should we do teaching textbooks or should we do math? Like, he does not want to hear about it. We are on a date. We're going to talk about not homeschool. I'm like, oh, got it, got it. We are not going to talk about homeschool. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to not talk about this, but I really want to talk about it. I need to talk about it with someone. You can call me. (laughs) I'm going to call you, Kelly. I'm totally going to call you. Uh, Oh, my goodness. I have no idea. I was like, how are we going to fill up an hour? Well, apparently that's not a problem for us. Um, (laughs) Uh, thank you so much for joining me, Kelly. I think um, hopefully people got some good ideas and tips and just feel encouraged from our conversation um, this afternoon. Yes, um, I've had so much fun. Thank you for having me. And um, I look forward to doing this again sometime, whether it's in person or online. We should do it in February. You know, we'll come up with jokes and, you know, yes. we're somewhere <laughs> right, something up. Because like, you know, February, about 10th or so, like, I need to pick me up. I'm not, you know, chocolate. You last longer than me. I'm like, normally by January 15th. I'm like, okay. Uh, <laughs> <We're done. laughs> I have heard of people taking all of February off, which I'm like, that yeah. is intense. And you can do that. And that's one thing, like, if it's not working for you, just stop. Take a break. You know, like you said, you, you have your ice cream day or take a season because you can school year round and it looks different. Like you, you could do formal schooling until you're done and then you can switch to something else. That's just a different pacing and pick, pick it back up after you've had a good break. Totally. And I'm, I'm going to take our own advice and administer it to myself. <laughs> Right. So uh, for those of uh, you watching, audience is thinking about homeschooling or has decided to homeschool, you're looking for next steps and resources, you can find us at hslda.org. We'll post a link in the comments. It's hslda.org. Get started. Um, in addition to our website resources, I want to that you know, HSLDA members have accesses to a great legal team, educational consultants that'll help you set up your homeschool, tailor your homeschool, hold your hand, cry with you, all the good things. Um, You might have a child with learning differences who have dealt with bullying, uh, trauma in a traditional school or other settings. HSLDA educational consultants are also homeschool moms who specialize in pre-K through eighth grade and high school. They're ready to help you tackle all those challenges, whether it's finding a math curriculum or, you know, fun things to do. And um, we also have a huge library of um, resources. Uh, We've done some webinars. We have another one coming up actually on Thursday at 7 p.m. They are free. And I'm going to go ahead and share Kelly's website. It's H, uh, it's 90 minute, it's 90, it's 90 schoolday.com, 90 minute schoolday.com. She's also on Instagram, 90 minute school day, 90 minute school day. And um, I also have one. um, It's uh, called the reluctant homeschool mama, but I feel like I should change it because I was reluctant before. And now I'm kind of like the um, excited, but with some trepidation, homeschool mom. I need to come up with a shorter. You need a one. shorter. One. <laughs> <laughs> shorter. Anyways, thanks again, Kelly, and um, I look forward to meeting again. You know, here in person on the river, preferably when it's not raining. When it's not raining, yes, I agree. Yes. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, everyone.